Jake Ludington here at HP Discover, and I'm here with Paul Miller. And it seems like every time a new technology comes along, like Composable, for instance, there's sort of the perception that the the best path is to throw everything away and and start fresh. Is that is that fair to say with Composable, or is there is there a better path? Yeah. So we we heard that a lot from customers. Don't give me a technology that I have to throw everything away, start from scratch. So that's where years ago we started to think about composability and built OneView, HPE OneView, as that on-ramp to composability. So some elements it has of composability, such as template-based provisioning. So you don't get all the benefits of composability, but you get to deploy servers, compute, and storage as one with uh, their current existing DL servers, Blade servers, 3PAR, you don't get the speed and flexibility and the ability to decompose, but you can provision infrastructure faster. Also through the API, all the partners that we enabled in the composability vision are also enabled to you. So the efficiencies you're going to get from Docker integration, from Chef integration, SaltStack, all our partners get to you on your existing infrastructure. And then because it's built on one view, our Synergy product composable, and our existing platforms, they coexist, and it's an easy migration at your own pace. So if I could drill down just for a second on like the, the Docker integration, because that was a, a recent announcement, is that something that people get as a win right now using OneView if they have any of the like Gen 7 and newer architecture? Absolutely, so they can go up to GitHub, download Docker, the API's been integrated with OneView, so you can quickly deploy Docker containers into HP infrastructure simply, easily. You don't even have to really know all the elements of Docker to get the advantages. And then it seems like then you guys have, you, you have the uh, Hyperconverge 380 that, that just yeah. came out as well. And how does that fit into this, um, this road to the cloud, okay. or a road to composability, not road to the cloud, road to composability? Yeah. Well, actually the road to co cloud is built on composability, and we can talk a little bit about that too. But uh, on the HC380 specifically, uh, it's all, again, built on OneView. And what we've done with that is built a VM vending machine user interface on top of that. So customers can begin to deploy VMs much quicker. And what we're going to do with the Hyperconverge 380 is make it upgradable to composable. Today, Hyperconvergence, for example, the networking is fixed. It's not fluid. In the future, we'll make it fluid just like we do in our Synergy products so customers can buy Hyperconvergence today, get the advantages. Like one advantage that we have, we announced a benchmark, VDI, and with our HP Financial Services, you can get VDI at $11.30 uh, per seat per month. That is compared to AWS at $18 so that's, per that's seat a, that's a big per cost month. Savings. That's a big cost savings, yeah. So you'll get the advantages, and then when you want to move 380 to Composable, you can upgrade from there. And this may not fit directly in the vision, but so one of the things that I see as, as a challenge that people have faced both with um, containers and with VM is people deploy a lot of stuff and then they don't remember what the VM was attached <laughs> to. Is that is that addressed at all in this this OneView world? So uh, not in the OneView world, but the integration with our operation analytics. So operation analytics is plugged into OneView, and that's where we map application analytics and application relevance to the hardware. So we make it easy for people to yeah, understand what they're doing and get the telemetrics they need to make different choices. Let's say you want to uh, uh, rebalance and get rid of some VMs, get rid, you know, in the future get rid of some containers, you can do that too. And so, I mean, kind of the, the key thing that you pointed out is that, that one of the missing pieces here is that there's no decomposition. Uh, <laughs> how do people deal with that, uh, that, that sort of that aspect of it now with the infrastructure that they have versus the, the future composable world? Yeah, so unfortunately, once infrastructure is provisioned, even though it can be like over provisioned by 50%, most of it stays over provisioned forever <laughs> until they actually shut the application down. And that's the real problem, you know, over the lifespan of an application, which is typically five years and some applications up to 20 years, the infrastructure that they bought and deployed is static. And that's where the real value of Composable is going to come over the whole life cycle because some applications are really important when they start off and they diminish, but they're always like maybe have two or three users. 
So now you can shrink your, your, your application base over the entire life cycle and have that composing and recomposing. That's what's going to be really exciting over the life cycle. I look forward to seeing that happen. <laughs> Me too. All right, thanks, Paul. Thanks, Dick.